Hey guys, in this tutorial, we show you how to create a scrolling background using a custom brush set in Anime Studio. So why would you want to use the brush tool to create a scrolling background? Well, it really comes down to limitations of Anime Studio in terms of, let's say, frame rate or crashing. If you have a lot of assets on screen, it can sort of complicate matters. So Jim Mills came up with this solution when he was working on his series Buddies. And you'll see here that it works out pretty well. So first, let's look at the scene from Buddies just to get an idea of what we'll be doing here. You can see the scrolling background in the background. It's a far shot than a longer shot and so forth. So that's from Buddies. And the method we'll be seeing here is what Jim applied. And again, he came up with this solution because Anime Studio was having some issues with keeping up with all the assets on screen. You can copy and paste these things and then modify them and so on. But again, sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. What you'll need is some buildings, at least three buildings to work with. And we've already drawn some up ahead of time. And they're pretty basic, but here they are and we'll be working with this. So first, once you draw those out, we will want to go up to the project settings. So we'll just go to file and then project settings and you'll want to adjust the width and height of the workspace to be the same. In this case, we'll do 1280. Make sure you turn constraint proportions off so that you can enter this number in. So 1280 by 1280 and then click OK. Now, you'll want to put your buildings, if they're not already done so, into a group layer. So we have some buildings, we have some hills, and we have the road. We're just going to make a group layer and put all of those elements into it. So this will make things easier when it comes to resizing, which we'll do right now. We want to resize with the Transform Layer tool so that the edges of the road are touching the workspace boundaries. So that blue line right there on each side We'll just have it so it's touching. Now, once you've done that, we can render this out using Control R if you're on PC, Command R if you're on a Mac, and you can kind of see what this is going to look like. Now, we will need to save this as a PNG file. So in that render screen, go down to File, Save As, and then PNG, and we can then go to the Anime Studio folder on your hard drive. So Program Files, Smith Micro, Anime Studio 9.5 or whichever version you're using, resources, support, brushes. It's kind of a long path there, but you can see we have some brushes in here. He's already made some for himself. What we can do here then is name this brush. So we'll name it buildings just for this example. And then we can click save. Now, if you are using the 32-bit version or the 64-bit version, you'll have to make two brush sets for both if you're jumping between the two, just so you're aware. And that only applies to Windows users. So now you could make a new document or we could just hide this um, layer and then make a new vector layer to start the scene here we're gonna be making for the scrolling background. So first, we will name this one Buildings because we're gonna bring the brush in to get this to work. So we'll go to project settings first of all and we'll reset the workspace back to something like 720p or 1080p whichever you're going to do. We'll take the add point tool and we're going to draw a straight line all the way across. Take the create shape tool, click the line and then click create shape. Now come over here to your style panel and choose no brush. We're going to look for that brush and you'll notice it's not actually here. So what you're going to need to do is whenever you put a brush into the folder, you need to restart Anime Studio. So let's just click OK. Let's save this file so that we can come back to it here in a second. So we can find a folder on our computer where we want to save it. We can just find a tutorials folder. In this case for us, just put it somewhere where you'll be able to find it here. And we'll just name it Buildings for right now. And then click Save. And then close out of Anime Studio. And then reopen that file so that we can relaunch Anime Studio, and then we will be good to go. So now, coming back here, we'll take the Select Shape tool and click on that line, 
come over here to the style palette and click no brush, scroll down, and now you can see we have our buildings right here. Now, if we click OK and we zoom in, you can see we have kind of a mess. It's almost like an earthquake got a hold of our buildings or something. You'll want to click on that brush icon again and adjust the brush jitter angle. Now you could put it to zero right away. We're just kind of scrolling around here just to show you what's going on here. You can see as we go less and less, it gets more stable. And you're going to want to play around with the brush spacing as well so that we can see all the buildings and we can get it so that there's no gaps. You can see there's a gap there, but we can try to close it in. We'll try to go, let's see here, let's try about 125 and click OK. So now we have the line of buildings, and it's really small though, so there are a few things we can do to correct this. And the first is to zoom in with the camera. You can see we're zooming in on the camera. The problem with this is when we move the camera around, it's really hard to work with because it's so zoomed in, it moves so fast. So that might not be something you want to do. So we can just reset that. So that's one method, just keep that in mind. The second method is just resizing the layer with the transform layer tool. This in itself is kind of a pain because as you can see, as we're trying to resize it, it's just getting so big, it's hard to grab a hold of it. And as we continue to resize, it's you know kind of a slow process here. And so you could do that if you wanted to. Let's just reset those properties. The last method you could use is the line thickness method. So we'll click on that shape, go to the style palette, and we can resize this all the way up to as far as it will let us to go. So if we go to like 300, it defaults to 256, but that's the thickest we can go, and you can see that's about how big it's going to get. Now you could use a combination of these methods, that's what Jim did for buddies. And if you do the line thickness, you'll also need to extend the line outward too, because as you can see, it kind of uh, messes with the length of the line when you do that. But Jim used a combination of zooming in, layer enlarging, and line thickness for buddies. For this tutorial, we'll just zoom in just for the sake of simplicity. Again, you may want to combine these elements if you plan to do this yourself. So we'll just get a good zoom here so we can see what's going on here. Just like that. And this will be a good foundation then for the remainder of the tutorial. So next, let's create a sky. We can go to the new layer and choose vector. And we can name this sky just to give us some color, you know, for the background here. We can come up here to the uh, shape tool and we'll just draw out a rectangle that covers the workspace. Take the select shape tool and we'll use a gradient for this. And we'll just select a nice light blue color for the left end and then double click on the right indicator and choose a darker blue click OK and then click OK and then you can adjust that gradient if you wish just by moving those handles around. We'll create a ground now after we put the sky underneath the buildings make sure you do that so the buildings are visible. We'll create the ground vector layer now and we'll just basically do the same thing minus the gradient so we can just come in here and draw out the ground and you could do a gradient but just for the simplicity of this tutorial we'll choose a dark gray you know street looking color make sure the ground is also below the buildings but above the sky so now we have a look that looks like this if we render it out you can see there's still a gap though so that happens when we enlarge you can sometimes still see some little flaws so we'll take the select shape tool click on that line go back into the brush here and we can try adjusting the number now, I believe this is going to make it a little bit worse, but let's turn on the minimize frame to frame randomization as well, because that can help as well. Enlarging the number will increase the spacing. So let's come back here and just change it then to 23. And you can see now that has solved the issue and we should be now good to go. So what we can do now is we can bring in a character so that we can kind of get this whole thing going. So we'll import the character. We're using the character we use from our running cycle tutorial. Now he's gonna be really big because we're so zoomed in with the camera, so you might have to zoom out a bit and do some resizing here if you bring in a character like we did. 
and kind of shrink him down to size and try to get him on frame into the workspace. Like so. We can also, if we want to, mirror him, depending on how you want him to run, of course. So we can click that flip horizontal icon and we can just position him maybe close to the center of the screen, you know, wherever you want him to be running. You can see it's a running cycle. So he's stationary. We want the buildings to move. So we'll click on the buildings layer. And what we're going to do now is we need to create a keyframe at frame one for the buildings so that we can get this animation moving. So we'll come down here to frame one. We'll click once with our transform layer tool to create that keyframe and then we can move then to frame 96 and we can hold down the shift key and move to the right. That will lock in so we can do a horizontal movement and then you can see this is what it looks like. If we use control J that allows us to hide the assets outside the screen. We're going to highlight all the keyframes and choose linear for the buildings because it just works better for camera movements. Smooth kind of has a ease in and out effect that's better for character movements. For camera stuff, we like to go with linear most of the time. So just highlight those two keyframes and choose that. Now we can play this out and we can see what it looks like. So that's looking pretty good. And you can see it kind of gives us the desired effect. Now if we want, we could resize the buildings. They could stand to be a little bit bigger in this case. So we can just click on that buildings layer. We can zoom out. Now in this case, we can just take the transform layer tool in this case, since it's just a small adjustment, we don't really want to zoom in and make the character bigger. So we'll just come in here with the transform layer tool, zoom all the way out, and then just hold in shift and try to increase just a little bit. And we can even nudge it down so it is meshed with the ground. We don't have that gap. And that looks a little bit better. We can play it out and we can see what that looks like. Also make sure that you are on frame zero when you do resize and move the buildings so that you don't mess up your keyframes. Okay, so now we will want to apply a softening effect to this. The problem is if we go to the blur radius and the layer properties and choose one, because it's such a tiny little image and we're zoomed in, it's going to look really blurry. We don't want that in this case. So what we need to do then after resetting the blur radius is we need to go back to the original brush asset and make some adjustments. Now if you have the brush asset in another file, you can open it up. We still have it in our same file here. So all we're going to do is just hide those layers that we made and bring in the original brush asset and then we need to do the same thing we did before. We need to shrink it down because we did the zoom in with the camera. You know things kind of got a little bit um, different on us here. We're also going to need to adjust the size of the project window or the workspace as well. So go back to your project settings. Make sure you change it back to 1280 by 1280 and hit OK. And then we're just going to try to line this up as best as we can, just like we did before when the street was touching the sides of the workspace. And what we're going to do from here now is apply the blur effect to that group layer. Because we're not zoomed in or anything, it's going to make things a lot easier. So for instance, if we put in one and we hit apply and OK, and we render this out, you can see it's slightly softer. So we could really now control the softness of this. We can go back to the layer properties and let's say put in 20 and then click OK and then we render it out again. You can see it's even softer. So it just depends on how soft you want this to look. Let's go to 30 and click OK and that's looking pretty good. So let's save this as a PNG and you're going to do the same steps as you did before. You got to go back to your Anime Studio folder on your hard drive which is under program files if you're on Windows. Smith Micro, your Anime Studio folder, Resources, Support, Brushes, and then all we're going to do is just replace that one that we made before. So just click it, hit Save, and hit Yes to replace, and we can close out of this. Now, once again, we will need to close out of this file. So we'll just go to File and Save, and then close the program and reopen it so that the brush changes will take effect. 
Now we can come back here and hide this asset layer and bring back in our running assets. And you can see now that it has automatically been blurred because the brush itself is blurred and we don't have to worry about blurring it in the actual animation. We can readjust the size of the window then and then we can play this out. And we can see now that it looks pretty good. Now, of course, we can add ma many more details to this. The background is quite simple just for the purpose of this tutorial. If you would actually like a tutorial on how to create more backgrounds, maybe buildings or more detailed backgrounds, definitely let us know. And I believe that is a wrap. Thanks for watching, guys. My name is Chad Trofgerben. I have narrated Jim Mills, recorded the tutorial, and he used his method from Buddies to provide the content for this tutorial. If you haven't seen Buddies, be sure to check it out. If you're looking for more tutorials, please subscribe to us. We need subscribers. That's how we live. If you didn't subscribe, we would die. It's, it's a fact. Well, maybe it's not, but you know what I mean. So subscribe. You can check us out on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you next time.